Texas Congressman Ron Paul is the last candidate standing between Mitt Romney and the Republican nomination for president. Mr. Paul has taken some time out of his schedule to join us now. Dr. Paul, thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Nice to be with you. You know, it seems that the nomination is just about wrapped up with Mitt Romney taking the reins. Uh, why, at this point, are you still running? Well, I think by the numbers, he certainly is uh, yeah. in a good position. But uh, there's a lot of activity going on this past weekend, you know, mm -hmm. like in... Uh, Minnesota and Iowa, and we're picking up a lot of delegates that people had written us off. So I just think it wouldn't be right for the people who have put so much energy and invested so much money into this campaign to just say, okay, let's drop it before we even count the votes. So we're going we're to pursue it, and we know uh, the numbers, but uh, it doesn't mean that if you have a real good showing, you can't have a presence and, mm -hmm. and influence in the Republican Party, and uh, we're not going to give up on that. Will you stay in the running th into the August nom or the August uh, convention? Well, I think that depends on how things go. There aren't that many primaries left. You know, we have we have Texas and California, just a couple, so mm -hmm. it's sort of winding down. But the process isn't winding down. You know, uh, e even in Texas, you go through. You know, not, not only the vote, but then you go to your state conventions. A lot of other states, the delegates are decided at the convention. And some of these places where we surprise a lot of people, it may, ironically, it may turn out that we actually won Iowa. <laughs> you may just. Yes. It's interesting. As you begin your Texas tour in El Paso yesterday, Governor Perry comes out and endorses Mitt Romney. What do you make of that? Oh, I'm not surprised yeah. because because the other candidates all had similar views. He had, mm -hmm. I guess, previously endorsed uh, Newt Gingrich. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that's, that's sort of to be expected because if you look at those three in particular, their foreign policies would be the same, mm -hmm. uh, their monetary policy would be the same, they're not as worried about debt as I am, I'm very worried about debt. I talk a lot about civil liberties and protection of privacy and the Patriot Act. And this is what the supporters want to hear about, especially the young people on campuses. They don't like the debt they're inheriting. They, they don't like these wars that we're mm -hmm. endlessly involved in, and they know have to, they'll have to deal with them. So it's not unusual uh, to see when one candidate drops out to endorse somebody else that has very similar views. I'm, I'm trying to challenge the Republican Party and, and this whole country to change, change positions uh, because actually 70% of the American people now want us to get out of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. that, many, that percentage now wants us to know more about the Federal Reserve. Why should the Fed be able to create trillions of dollars and bail out special interests? These are very, very popular subjects mm -hmm. and uh, I, I want to do my very best to get those changes made. And so, therefore, I have to challenge all the other candidates. And, and challenge you, you, no doubt. Will, in El Paso, you drew about a crowd of 1,200 or so. Right. A lot of them young people. There are a lot of young people here at, at UT, obviously, and that's where you're going to be tonight. Right. Uh, you know, wh why uh, target the, the youth voter, per, per se? You know, I didn't start off with saying, well, we're going to have a campaign. We're going to tar target the younger generation. Yeah. I just kept talking about what I've been talking about for mm -hmm. 30 years. And all of a sudden, you know, four years ago it started, but it, instead of it just dying away after the last campaign, uh, the organizations on student campuses kept going and mm -hmm. going. And uh, they remain interested. They've gotten involved. They're involved in party uh, politics. They're involved in studying. They're, stu they're very much involved in studying Austrian economics. And uh, it just seemed like the message stirred the emotions of the young people more than the others, but others have remarked that the audiences these days are starting to change. It's not just all the young people mm -hmm. that are coming, so it, there, it, there is more of a diversity of the crowds, but it is, it is definitely true. Uh, if the young people determine who would win the primary, mm -hmm. I, I, might, I think I'd pretty well much win it. <laughs> well, it's interesting, too, just to see what the president is doing. He's targeting college campuses, talking about keeping student loan interest low. What do you make of his stance? Yeah, he's, he's going to appeal to them, and mm -hmm. he did appeal to young people in the last go-around. We have a lot of people, though, are no longer with him because he was also sort of going to end wars, mm -hmm. and uh, he was also going to lighten up on attacking people who use marijuana for medical reasons, and mm -hmm. he hasn't changed that at all. So uh, he, he's going to appeal, but his approach when it comes to dealing with uh, the finances of young people, mm -hmm. it'll be different. He figures... Well, the, the job is to give them more money. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is to give them more freedom and opportunity and jobs uh, instead of saying, who, who can give them the most uh, stuff by taking it from another group to another? 
the, the young people that come out respond very favorably to the issue of, of liberty and mm -hmm. assuming responsibility and getting to keep what you earn and have an incentive system. And that is how you work your way out of this. It isn't by further promising more redistribution of wealth. Mm -hmm. The pretense had been going on for decades, and look what the students got. Education that is poor, a lot of them are educated, and they don't have jobs now, and they have a lot of debt. So even though it looked like government's taking care of us, uh, so do we go to the next step and bail out that system and patch it up, or do we say, it isn't working well, why don't we try a new system? The system of trying to give everybody a house didn't work, so there must be a better way. Now, look at, looking at where you know, we're at in the, in the polling numbers um, and considering where this, this candidacy is headed, this race, are you warming up to, to Mitt Romney at all? I know you're still very much in the race, but are you warming up to the man thinking maybe vice presidential nomination perhaps in your view? You know, we've always gotten along pretty well in a social manner, mm. and, and we're always friendly, and we do talk to each other. We knew each other even four years ago, and that, that remains, but still there's a, a lot of differences in our policy. So I think in a social manner, uh, I, I think it's a pretty warm relationship. When it comes to really understanding what we have to do in foreign policy and what we have to do with the Fed and how to cut spending and concern about, say, the National Defense Authorization Act where the military can arrest American citizens, mm -hmm. no, we have a little ways to go on that. Let me ask you something else looking ahead to the future, no matter what happens in 2012. In 2016, according to a new public policy poll, it suggests Texas could go Democratic in that year due to uh, an increased Latino vote. What do you make of that? I think that's possible, yeah. but uh, you know, last night at uh, El Paso, uh, we had a lot of Latinos right. out, and, and the message I talk about is, matter of fact, it's every bit as popular outside the Republican Party as in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. So when you put my name up against Obama, I'm equal to Romney and challenge him because mm -hmm. independents like what I'm saying. A lot of progressive Democrats like the position on foreign policy mm -hmm. and civil liberties. So that doesn't worry me too much. If I were to be in that campaign uh, and doing something in 2016, that, it's not likely to happen for sure. But I tell you what, it wouldn't frighten me a bit because I'm so confident that the freedom philosophy uh, is going to be uh, invasive or pervasive in Republicans and Democrats because today uh, both parties endorse the same foreign policy, the same monetary policy, the same Federal Reserve System. So when we make greater progress, which we're making constantly, mm -hmm. I think it will affect people across the board. So uh, people who believe in liberty shouldn't be uh, frightened because there is a demogra demographic shift. All right. And finally, you know, I understand you'll be retiring at the end of this term. Or are you going to be looking at life beyond Congress the way things are headed? Well, I take one day at a time. Yeah. We have a month or two to go for the convention. But, mm -hmm. you know, I've uh, been back and forth to Washington for, for a long time, and I've been very pleased that I've been able to represent uh, people of the 14th District mm -hmm. uh, for a good many years. All right, Dr. Ron Paul, real pleasure. Thank you very much.